Hey, SPX attendees, my name is Liz Reed. I am one part of the comic duo Cuddles and Rage. And every year at SPX, I host a clay workshop where we learn how to make mixed media comics. So I didn't want another year to pass without us having one of these special workshops. Today, I am going to show you how to make a zombie strawberry. Every year, I try and do something different. And this zombie strawberry is inspired by our new graphic novel, Bites of Terror. Uh, this book came out right at the start of the pandemic, so we haven't had an SPX yet where we've been able to share this uh, diorama mixed media graphic novel with you. So this little guy is inspired by the first story, which is One More Swim. Uh, Bites of Terror is a horror anthology full of 10 different stories. So this little guy is the first one to kick it off. So without further ado, let's get started with sculpting. Here's what you need to get started. Red, green, and white clay. Here I have a mixture of Sculpey and Primo, which are clays you need to bake in an oven. You can also use air dry Crayola. You'll need some foil, toothpicks, Q-tips, cotton balls, a paintbrush, gray paint or markers, glue, a cutting tool, and a clean workspace. First, you wanna grab your foil and roll it into a basic strawberry shape so a cone-like shape. When your basic foil shape is ready, take your red clay and add in a little white. Mix these two colors until you get a slightly lighter red. You don't wanna go too far and get pink. Flatten out your mixed clay into a kind of pancake shape using your palms, and then fold it over your foil ball. You'll wanna use the table to kind of flatten the top and roll it between your palms, and you'll wanna use your thumbs to smooth out the clay. Before we get too far, we're gonna put a toothpick in the bottom of the strawberry, and then we're also going to put a toothpick on the top. You'll wanna to cut off that little extra bit because this is going to be your stem. Using the end part of your paintbrush, so the rounded side, make holes for where your eyes will be and then also make a hole for your mouth. You may need to add a little bit of extra clay if you find that the foil is bleeding through when you carve your mouth. You can also use the end of the paintbrush to kind of smooth out the clay. Grab your toothpick and add texture all around the strawberry. You don't wanna to push too hard and also not too light. Just get it to the point where you feel like you can see those little divots that you find in an actual strawberry. Before we move into our leaves and our stem, you'll want to take a moment to wash your hands because the red clay definitely gets all over. Condition your green clay between your palms to warm it up and then pinch a little bit of clay off and form a little soft triangle shape between your thumbs and your fingers. Go ahead and do this for around four leaves. If you're nervous, make it five or six. Then apply your leaves to the top of your strawberry. You'll want to cover the entire top with leaves and you can curl up the ends a bit just to give it some personality. Then take a little bit of extra green and cover your stem. You can use the end of your paintbrush to go ahead and smooth things out. You can also add a little bit of leaf detail using one of your toothpicks. I like to do this on all of my leaves. Once your strawberry is looking good, take a Q-tip and cut it in half. These will be our arms and legs. For now, take that cut toothpick and make holes for where your arms will be and your legs. Now grab your white clay and pull out enough clay to make two eyes. Roll the clay out into little balls and then place each ball inside your eye socket and flatten them out a little bit with your finger. Use the end of your paintbrush to carve out areas where the flesh might look exposed. This kind of gives it a more zombie-like feel. This is also where we will be inserting our little mold bits. Now your strawberry is ready to bake or air dry, depending on the brand that you use. While your clay is baking or air drying, pull out your cotton ball. Take that cotton ball and stretch it out a little bit so we get some thin little bits of cotton. Now pull out your gray marker or paint and you'll want to apply that color 
to the cotton ball. We kind of want to make that mold look a little scarier than just white puffs. One technique I like to use is to take the markers and paint my fingers gray and then roll my fingers into the cotton balls. This gives it a less harsh gray and blends it a bit more so you kind of get more of a overall, you know, slightly gray look. You can apply that same technique to a strawberry to get that rotten look. Instead of sacrificing my fingers here, uh, I went with painting a Q-tip and then applying that gray all over my strawberry. Grab two Q-tips and cut them in half. Then stick the ends of those Q-tips into each hole that you made for your limbs. So slightly bend the arms and if you find that you're having like a lot of extra cotton coming off at the end, just pull it out. It'll also thin out your little cottony moldy hands so that they can take a better shape. For your feet, curve the bottom of the Q-tip so that the cotton part looks like a little foot and do the same with inserting it to the bottom. Now it's time for the best part is to add on the mold. Ew. Pull out your glue and put a little dab on some foil. Then take your toothpick and grab a little glue and then put it into those little indentions that we made for the rotting moldy bits all over our strawberry. Then using your same toothpick, take a little clump of that moldy cotton and push it into those moldy divots. Now we're really starting to see our zombie strawberry come to life. Now your zombie strawberry is ready to attack. For your diorama, all you have to do is to go inside your kitchen and find some fruit that need to be attacked by your new zombie strawberry. So go ahead and just use your iPhone or whatever camera you have and take your diorama picture. Thank you so much for sculpting along with me and creating your own zombie strawberry inspired by Bites of Terror. I want to see your comics. So if you can tag at SPX Comics on Instagram and Twitter and at Cuddles and Rage, I would love to share your creations and celebrate all the, uh, if you're like me, your rotten food in your kitchen that you used for a beautiful set design. Well, until next year, guys, I hope you have fun creating comics and sculpting away. That's it for me. I am Liz Reed of Cuddles and Rage. And until next time, I will see you next SPX. Read more comics. <laughs>